Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's that time of year, late March, getting questions about growing the shamrocks and thought we'd go ahead and talk about it. There's not a ton to it. They're very fun, unique plants. Care indoors versus outdoors is going to be slightly different and there are a few things you should probably know so that you don't panic or <laughs> get discouraged from growing the plant. Overall, they're fairly simple house plants. Oh, and part of my hands. I'm doing a lot of planters over the last hour or so. Before I go into the long talky talky part of the video, I'll go ahead and pop the quick care up here on the screen for people who just want, want to run down, basically want to look at a plant tag. While you're having a gander at that, I should mention Oxalis is a very massive group of plants. There are lots of varieties and a few species. So uh, I'm referring in this video to just like the common green and purple, the ones that like you might pick up at a florist, the ones that most of us have, not the more rare varieties. And remember, take that quick care with a grain of salt because there are going to be some things that vary depending on where you live. Mostly just in regards to uh, how to water the plant and what kind of light to give it. It's going to vary somewhat on where you live. The more intense your sun, then you might want to give it more shade, especially if you live someplace really hot and dry. It's one of those plants where the more light, the more warmth, the more water it's going to need. It, that's a fairly easy rule to live by, right? Come in a wide variety of sizes. There can be a lot of variation with the patterns that's on the foliage, some variation with the sizes on the plants. Some will get nice and big, some stay smaller, and some variation in the flowers too. I grabbed this one specifically because it has an array of a slightish pink purple flower and some white flowers on it. It looks like they're white flowers that fade out into a purplish color. So you can kind of see on camera, sort of. You can see the little very light blushy pink and then some of that purple in there. Maybe more of a lilac. Yeah, there are a lot to choose from. Chances are if you're watching this video, you already have one. So how do we take care of it? What do you got to do to keep this plant happy? These plants like a nice bright room. They can even take some direct light for a period of time. The lower strength your light that comes through the windows, the more light you'll want to give these. I generally gauge the amount of sun they're getting by their compactness, right? If they get long and stringy and start to look just not so pleasant, chances are they need more light. So I'd increase the brightness. Indoors, they would take, I would say, part sun. Maybe don't keep them directly next to a window in climates where your sun comes through those windows really, really strongly right? Because that could scorch the foliage. But like I said, they can take a good amount of sun, particularly in more mild climates. If you're unsure, it doesn't hurt to start with really bright indirect light and go ahead and bump it up to more light or go ahead and scoot it down to less light. Fairly easy to gauge what the plant prefers. You'll be able to look at it and go, yeah, that doesn't look so happy. If the foliage starts to get any browning or scorching on it, and that means probably dial it down some. I like a well-drained potting mix, organically rich, you know, typical houseplant stuff there. These have what I would consider to be average to slightly above average water needs. You can normally let the top inch to maybe half an inch of soil dry out, again, depending on your climate. If you live some place where it's very, very humid, then you could probably let them dry out longer than that. These are plants that are never shy to let you know when they need water. When they get thirsty, the foliage will start to droop down and look sad. You give it a nice heavy drink and it should pop right back up. Usually. There are some exceptions. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. And generally speaking, even though these are quite thirsty plants, really a good plant for somebody who's a heavy-handed waterer, as long as you don't let it sit in the water, right? Want that raise up out of there. With me, when I've grown these in the past, if I need to water them more than once a week, I either go ahead and bump it up into a larger container with some fresh soil in there to hold on to more moisture, or perhaps it's in a clay container, and then I'll either repot it into something that doesn't breathe as well, or just drop that clay pot into a, maybe even a sleeve like this. That would do the trick. Plenty of people talk about watering these multiple times a week, and that's totally fine if you want to do that. It's just, I'm not that person. I, I don't have time for all that. Once a week is about as much time as I can give them. However, that being said, towards the end of the growing season, these have usually grown quite a bit. These are fairly fast growing plants. Most of them, like I said, just talking about the more common types here. At that point, they generally need more water and I'm not going to repot them right before they're probably going to a dormancy. So that's like the one exception when it's, you know, just for like a month, might need to keep it better hydrated and stay on top of it more than I was before. Generally speaking, these plants also prefer more mild temperatures, which is one of the reasons that they tend to do fairly well indoors, like 55 to 75, somewhere in there. 
usually is what keeps them happy. You can take these outside in the spring, but you'll want to remember to harden them off, move them into shade. Don't bring them outside and put them in the sun, even if they're getting a ton of sun in the house. My house is over there. That's why I'm pointing over there, because they shock very quickly and very easily. In fact, this one, I had it sitting over here on the table while I was working on some other things, and the direct sun hit it for just, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and this entire side just started to woof, wilt down and droop, because it's not used to that. This has been probably grown in a mass production greenhouse somewhere and then in a truck and then it was at the grocery store that they need to be adjusted to the brighter light. The more mild your temperatures are, then the more light you can typically give them. Where I live, it gets pretty hot and humid during the summertime, so I've never had great luck with growing these outdoors all season. Could try and grow this as a perennial zone six and up, maybe seven. No, I think it's six through 11. Might be seven. Pretty sure it's six. So if you grabbed one of these, for the holidays or just because you wanted a nice fun green plant to have inside for the springtime you live in zone six and up you could take this outside drop it in the ground in the garden someplace where it gets i would say probably part sun would be best for it and maybe even part shade that's if you live someplace like me where it's very hot and humid during the summertime but again the more mild your climate the more sun you can give them they'll want an organically rich very well drained soil and they should just keep looking happy and pretty. While the plant's actively growing, you can fertilize them with just a typical all-purpose fertilizer. It's not always a bad idea to dial back the dilution though. About, I'd say, maybe cut it back by 50%. You can give that to them every couple of weeks and that should keep them happy. If you notice the foliage is all looking very light green, like you're seeing in here. If everything's looking lighter green, probably want to step up the nitrogen, step up the fertilizing, or consider that it might be time to repot the plant. When I notice that I'm having to give the plant a lot of water and it's still just wilting down, that's a really good sign that it's time to repot the plant. Bump it up by about an inch to two inches on the outside diameter. Again, organically rich, all-purpose potting soil will be fine for it. it just needs to drain well because these don't want to set in standing water. They, they will rot and then they will die. And then typical house plant pests, thrips, aphids, mealybugs, spider mites, they can get them all. If you take them to the sink every few weeks and blast the foliage off from the tops and the bottoms, that can help avoid having pests getting settled in there. Otherwise, you have your neems and insecticidal soaps. Those will come in handy if you notice any bugs or critters running around on your plant. And I should have mentioned with the lighter green foliage, the newer foliage is opening up this lighter green color. That's why it's like that. I don't think that's a deficiency. That's just newer foliage. That should continue to open up, get bigger, and darken up over the next uh, week or so. If your shamrock, false shamrock, came in one of these foil liners, don't forget to either pop a hole in the bottom for watering or to go ahead and completely remove the plant from the foil liner when you take it to the sink and give it a good drink. Because again, don't want it sitting down there in that water. Well, I suppose for like maybe half an hour, that would be okay if it sat in there and let it soak the water back up and have a good drink, but want to pull it out and dump that water out after probably 30 minutes. If you grow the plant for more than a few months, you will notice that at some point the plant's going to start to shrivel up and look like it's dying. That's totally normal. No need for panic. These plants will go into a dormancy when you start to see that they're wilting down and shriveling up, but all the care is correct, meaning that the pot size is appropriate to the plant, that the soil blend is okay, it's not sitting in water. If everything checks out and the conditions are how they should be to keep the plant normally happy then that is usually a sign that the plant's starting to enter that dormancy. When I notice that that's happening with the plant, I generally just stop watering it. I'll go ahead, move it to a spot where there's not as much light, let it dry out, and then uh, cut all the foliage off down to the soil surface and stick it someplace cool, dry, and dark for usually four to six weeks. Somewhere in there, sometimes they'll want to pop out of dormancy a little bit earlier than that, so it's a good idea to make sure you go back and check on them. You'll be able to see at the surface of the soil tiny little bits of green starting to pop up when the plant's like, okay, it's time to wake up. And at that point, you can go ahead and move them back into a brighter, warmer location and resume watering, but be careful with the watering because this is when they're going to be more prone to rise. So you have to remember that the plant's just coming out of a dormancy, so it's not going to be pulling water from the soil in anywhere near the same capacity that it is when it's growing normally like this right here. So I'll just usually give them a light drink, just a little bit of water, make sure it goes down. I'm not usually looking to make sure the water flushes through the pot a few times like I would be with a typical houseplant watering. Just a gentle drink and then not right into the bright, bright light, but just someplace brighter and warmer. And uh, as you start to see the growth pick up and they start to get a few inches tall, 
then generally it's okay then to go ahead and resume watering it normally and taking care of it the same way you were before. They don't always go into a dormancy. Typically they probably should, but maybe they just don't recognize any kind of change in, so they just want to keep on growing and that's totally fine. When the foliage starts to yellow, that's the best indication that it's about to go dormant. If it's yellowing and the soil's wet, like sopping wet, then that's probably just the plant getting way too much water. But they'll start to yellow and then brown and get crispy. They'll be wilty and it doesn't make sense as to why. I, we already talked about that, right? Yeah, I just want to point out that if yours doesn't go dormant, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Typically, these will be propagated just by division. Divide them up when they are in their dormancy, separate out the bulbs and the corms. I guess you could do it while they're growing, but you, there will be a bit of a setback because they don't respond that well to having their roots messed with. They're very thirsty plants, as we've established, and when you mess with the roots on thirsty plants, they tend to throw a fit for a while. If you damage too much of those roots, or really much at all of the roots, then it's just the end of the world for them, potentially literally. So be careful when you divide and propagate these. And then just a bit after they've broken dormancy, that's also a good time to consider repotting them. Assuming didn't dig the little bulbs up and store those, but if they're still in the same container, then that would be a good time to bump them up. But again, just like with resuming normal watering, I'd wait until they're somewhat more developed so that those tubers and corms aren't really flimsy and very easily broken. They're pretty easy and even kind of fun to keep cleaned up and looking tidy. If they start to get some spindliness on them, like you can see these flower buds in here, those are done. You just cut them right out. If you can, okay, and then apparently accidentally cut out some of the leaves too. Best to try and get that down as low as possible. Usually as these grow, sometimes they will start to crowd out some of what's on the inside and you'll get some yellow growth like in here and you can just reach right in and pull it out right from where it is. I'm talking about it like it's easy, but I can't find it. Where is it? There we go, right down in there. Just pluck those right out. Flower buds are also sometimes nestled in there. So you gotta be careful when poking around inside the plant. Don't wanna disturb the flowers. These do have a very high amount of oxalic acid in them. Not generally recommended to have these around where your cats and dogs can get to them either. It can cause issues with their kidneys and some health problems. Pardon the background noise, puppies playing with the seashell. Oh, and they will close their leaves and flowers up at nighttime. So don't, don't panic. I've been looking at my phone, trying to <laughs> see all the questions. Wanna make sure they get covered. That is totally normal. They'll fold up, close, and then in the morning when the light gets back on them, they should pop back open. Overall, really fun. Cute little plants, very lush, very green. Love the flowers. What do you think? You love your false shamrocks? What do you do with your oxalis? Comment down below, what are some of your favorite varieties? There's so many to choose from. The purple ones are really pretty. I'm in a spring mode right now and I just, I want lots of green things around me. Like I said, I thought that the variation with the flowers on this was really fun and pretty. And of course, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. It's impossible to remember everything in a video. So always check out the comment section and see what people have to add to the conversation. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.